few ad campaigns stick out in my memory like that of the Geico Cavemen. Beginning in 2004, this ad campaign was built around one central premise, that Geico's website is, quote, so easy, a caveman could do it. The ads revolved around Neanderthals, who are somehow still a part of modern society, taking offense to these advertisements in a sort of meta-commentary. How could it be offensive if it's true? Okay, first of all, I'm not 100% in love with your tone right now. Tone aside, historically, you guys have struggled to adapt. Yeah, right. Walking upright, discovering fire, inventing the wheel, laying the foundation for all mankind. You're right. Good point. Sorry we couldn't get that to you sooner. These Neanderthals were often played by the same set of actors, wearing prosthetic makeup to achieve their signature look. These ads were a huge hit for Geico, and soon, you couldn't watch a commercial break in the mid-2000s without coming across at least one of these ads. These commercials played constantly, on every channel, with any program, at all times of day. It seemed like for a brief period, the Geico cavemen were just everywhere. These ads were played so much, that the joke was soon lost, and the ads actually began to annoy most viewers. But, as with all things marketable and seemingly popular, it was only a matter of time before TV studios would come knocking, seeking to exploit the Geico cavemen in true Hollywood fashion. In 2007, it was announced that ABC was developing a sitcom based on the Geico cavemen advertisements, simply to be called Cavemen. ABC said of their new project, Cavemen will revolve around three prehistoric men who must battle prejudice as they attempt to live as normal 30-somethings in modern Atlanta. This announcement was immediately met with ridicule. On top of the concept already having worn out its welcome on television, the announcement that this sitcom's premise would comment on modern racial issues just came off as tone deaf. Also, one of the few reasons the adverts worked at all was because of the performances of the cavemen actors, who would be recast in this sitcom. Any of you fellas feel like losing all your money to a caveman? Police have released this sketch. Anybody? I mean, look at that. Is that supposed to be one of us? That well, thing looks like a problem. hairy baby raisin. Bill English, Sam Huntington, and Nick Kroll, in one of his first TV roles, were cast as the three lead cavemen. The pilot was shot in 2007 in Atlanta, and led to ABC ordering 13 additional episodes. It appeared that the network was confident in their new show, and decided to screen the pilot early for critics. And that's when things took a turn. So when are you going sailing with John Tesh? It's just a barbecue, Nick. If you think you can just blend right in with your snappy cocktail powder and your stylish hat, you are fooling yourself. You don't even know these people. No, I do know these people. They've been oppressing our people for 750,000 years. And you watch TV, it's all politically correct, but they air the Flintstones six times a day. I mean, it's just freaking hypocritical. Yabba dabba do. Seriously, don't, don't do that. The pilot was heavily criticized for appearing to use the cavemen characters as a surrogate for minorities in America, in commenting on modern racial tensions. The premise of this original unaired pilot centers around the cavemen attending a barbecue at an exclusive country club, where one of them, Joel, is going to meet with his non-Neanderthal fiancé's family. That man hates me. Dude, he doesn't hate you, he just doesn't know what the hell you are. These people like to think they're so civilized, but you know what? They're no different than us, just not as good looking. Except for you, sir, you're very handsome to me. Go in there and be the animal he thinks you are. Beat your chest, be aggressive. Act like them. And of course, the cavemen have trouble blending in with uptight high society, where their behavior is seen as crass. While Joel keeps falling into cavemen stereotypes, accidentally, in trying to win his fiance's father's approval. What? What's going on, Joel? Oh, Jackson, Jackson, for God's sake, stay down. Okay, okay, I know how this looks. But the thing is, it doesn't matter what I do or what I say. This is the way you're all going to see me. I'm okay with that. 
This is who I am. I'm a normal guy who makes stupid mistakes. I'm a guy who has who has a brother and, and a best friend who who can be complete jackasses. In other words, you know, I am just like all of you. But there's one difference, see, because I I love Kate. And Kate loves me. And I don't care what you think. I'm going to marry her whether or not I get your stupid blessing. Following the critical backlash on this unaired pilot, ABC didn't want to let the concept die still, and made some quick changes to the show. They decided to swap out the sitcom setting of Atlanta, Georgia, to San Diego, California. They drove a car with their feet. So there's this tiny waitress, and she's carrying a rack of ribs so big that they can tip over a car made of stone. I just don't see what's so funny about it. Yabba dabba do. Don't. Ever. Jeff Daniel Phillips, an actor from the TV commercials, was also brought in to reprise his role. Lastly, ABC also retooled the plot to be less focused on the prejudices facing the lead characters, to be more about everyday problems faced by men in their 30s. Who's Kate? Stop reading my texts. Is she nice? Yes, she's very nice. Good sense of humor? Great, yeah. She big up top? What? No, she's, huh? she's fine. Look, I'm not going to talk to you about how she is up top. Please, uh, just uh, give me the uh, phone. Wait, and... let me just... Wow. She is open-minded. Okay. Although the series would still occasionally comment on the stereotypes faced by the leads. But our caveman mascot is a tradition that dates back to the founding of the school. It's part of our history. Uh, no different than, say, the Duke Blue Devils or the Crimson Tide. Blue Devils don't exist, and you can't offend the Crimson Tide. It's an abstract concept. Cavemen do exist. Otherwise, you wouldn't have a pissed off one sitting here right now. Got it. Totally hearing you. Perhaps the Washington Redskins would be a better example. Yes, indeed they are, because there are a lot of Native Americans who are super ticked off about that. And I hear them. They make a great point. But I think that you'll find that our mascot is in no way derogatory. It essentially just became a run-of-the-mill sitcom about men in their 30s who just so happened to be cavemen. It's clear that the mere physical appearance of these characters was more important to the network than developing an actual premise for their sitcom. The goal of this show, much like the goal of the original commercials, was just to sell a product. To take something moderately popular, fail to understand it, and adapt it as quickly as possible. This was actually outlined in this exclusive leaked footage of an ABC network meeting that was recently uncovered. You know, you read what others had done, and you, and you took the next step. You didn't earn the knowledge for yourselves, so you don't take any responsibility. And before you even knew what you had, you, you patented it, and packaged it, and slapped it on a plastic lunchbox, and now you're selling it. You want to sell it. Well... Not including the original pilot, seven episodes aired before the sitcom was promptly cancelled for declining ratings and horrible reviews. The series became the subject of such ridicule that it was even parodied by the commercials that inspired it during the Super Bowl. Huh. A TV show. About us. What was the deal with that makeup? Exactly! Uh, why not just use real cavemen? Well, I thought their diction was good. You could hear everything they were saying. At least they didn't say, it's so easy, uh... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Looks there's that. The Geico Caveman commercials continued for another three years, before the concept was finally retired. Watching them now for the first time in years, I'm reminded of just how popular these ads were. This sitcom represents the classic exploitation of a concept that was already fully exploited to begin with. Much like the remains of actual Neanderthals, this show deserves to be buried and forgotten with time, perhaps only to be discovered years later by future generations as a relic of one of the many terrible decisions made on network television. <laughs>